How do you coil? Well, how do you coil a little toy airplane? You wind the rubber band up, and then you let it go, and it's got power. Why does it have power? Because it's got two fixed points to wind up. Then when you let go, it springs. And we've got to learn to wind up our body so that when we go forward, we'll unspring and turn through the ball to get that club head to meet the ball on that path, that inner path to the target line. Now, what if I take the rubber band off one part of it, like this, and begin to turn? There's no coil. Is there any power? There's no power. And that's what we see with golfers. They turn back. They don't coil this leg at all. There's no coil and there's no power. There's just a lunge back to the ball, a casting and a throwing motion. Now, I know a lot of you can identify with that. Now, I'm going to give you a real good picture and show you exactly what happens and how we coordinate that lower body coiling motion with the upper body. How's this picture? You can definitely see where my shoulders are lined and also my lower body. Now the backswing starts by a turning motion of the lower body and then the upper body turns. You can see that. And then the hips coil here on this thigh. The shoulders continue to turn. My back's to the hole. Now I'm in a perfectly coiled position. Now, as I make that athletic move, with my left side and uncoil my body, this is what I should get, a crossing motion. Do you see that? The arms are coming in behind that lower body. See, coil and uncoil. Well, let me show you what happens, though. Because people don't have a feeling for that unnatural coiling motion of that right leg, they have a tendency to start back and the leg will straighten out. And you can see what's happening is my hips have really turned back away. And I see this all the time. And what does that come from? Well, focus on the ball. Remember we talked about that, that instinct to want to hit. See? Or trying to keep the elbow in, some of these misconceptions. So what you want to do is if you take your athletic position stance that we talked about earlier, and you get positioned over the ball, and you get proper alignment, then as you turn back, there's a coiling motion, the shoulders turn, and you're ready to spring through and make a nice shot through to the pin. Remember, coiling is not natural. Now let's think about this thigh right here being that rubber band on that airplane. And when you make your backswing, you've got to fix this leg. You can't get it bowing out because it's not going to coil. As you swing back, we turn back with our inner body, and the leg maintains its position. If the leg maintains its position, and you coil against that thigh, this is going to get tight. It's like that rubber band. And we're in a position now to spring that rubber band and to go on through the ball, producing that circular motion to the inside of the ball. That's why you've got the sponge. That's why I developed that to give you the feeling of how to coil that thigh. Now get your sponge, and I'm going to go through some really tremendous drills to help you to feel how to coil, to get that powerful move through the ball. So simply take your sponge, put it down in your living room, and put your foot on the inside of it like this, and it's going to do, it's going to set that knee. It's going to set it on the inside. And now here are the drills. Hey, take a club, and always have a ball to work with. Put it in the normal ball position. There we go. Put the club across your shoulders like this, cross your arms. Get in the athletic position. We've talked about posture. And then simply turn back very slowly with your body. Just turn back. Bring the club head back behind the ball. Keep the knee in, and you'll feel this leg coil. You'll feel that tension there. I'm going to show you how to spring that in a minute. Right like that. Do little repetitions. Feel that coiling right there. Now let me show you another drill. Just take your hands out towards the ball, like this. Put your right hand under your left, and turn back. 
and let's feel that left shoulder just kind of coming behind the ball and as you do it just kind of pull up like this and you'll feel this thigh get nice and tight we are coiling that see and now we're going to show you how to spring that in a minute now let me tell you a big problem in golf that I see and that's reverse pivoting and that's where a player addresses the ball and then on the backswing there's a lifting action and a leaning actually to the left and there's no coiling over this thigh at all the correct motion on the backswing now one way that you can cure that if that's your problem you feel yourself lifting and kind of chopping down at the ball you may want to try this one thing I found in teaching that is that on the backswing if there's a reverse weight shift reverse pivot there'll be a gap between the head and the shoulder so use your sponge when you go out tee up a ball and I would suggest just using like a, an 8-iron or a 9-iron for this drill. And then take the sponge and just feel like it's a little pillow. And you're going to kind of put it on the side of your head and on your shoulder and address the ball. You don't have to make a long swing, but just take some little short little swings like this. And you're going to feel that you can't make a swing unless that weight comes back here and there's a coiling motion. If you do a reverse pivot, it'll fall right out. Now let me do one for you. Just put it in like this. Take a few little practice swings and then to the ball and then just make a few little swings through the ball. And you'll see that the ball will go right down the target line. Now use this sponge. That's what we've designed them for. Put it under your foot and work with it. We don't want you to think about focusing on this when you play. You do it when you practice. You gain those feelings of that coiling motion so that it becomes totally automatic when you get out on the course. Now, footwork is also very important to understand. Let's go over some little things that I can help you to get the feeling of the correct footwork, especially that left footwork as you move into the ball. I like to use a little horn. And you think this is kind of crazy, don't you? But it's a great way to feel that shift to the left. You simply put it under my left foot, and adjust my stance. Like this, I'm going to set up to the ball. Put it under here. Go back and coil. And then the downswing, like I said, starts with a little hip nudge, this here. Now, where are my hands when you hear it? That's right, they're right back here, and that's where they should be. See, because if I coil here, and I start with the left hip on the downswing, a little nudge, my hands are back here, and then I can make that movement into the ball. Now, as I showed you earlier with the crossing of the pipes, if there's a casting motion at all from the top, I'll never make that consistent move to the inside of the ball. And that's what you need to feel in your swing. Now there's another way you can gain that feeling and that's with the use of the ruler. So pick up your ruler and your sponge. Put your foot on the inside of the sponge. Set the ruler up like this. And we're going to take our grip turn back and coil and then just simply tap it right on your shoulder like that just like this now you should feel this thigh coiled and start with the little hip nudge just a little nudge like this just real easy and you'll feel that as this moves this springs and you'll feel your hands just kind of fall towards the ball see and in golf we don't want the hands to start it all on the downswing, to start that downswing. See, that's what we're going to get is a cast. This is what really delivers that club to the ball consistently time and time again. When this coils and when this uncoils that, and you'll feel yourself springing through the ball with tremendous power the next time you go out and play. Use your sponge to develop a little footwork. Here's a great little timing drill that you can do. Just simply put it between your knees like this, just, just up above your knees, and open your toes up a little bit like this. And then I want you to just swing back 
and forward like this and get your feet moving a little bit. Just kind of come up on your toe and up on your toe. It's a little dancing footwork drill. And this is just great because see what you're doing is you're like that baseball pitcher. You're coiling and you're uncoiling and you're feeling the motion back and through. Now that sets up a base for you to use the tempo ball. So we're going to swing back and through. And if you swing this correctly, the ball should swing back and tap you right in here, right on your back, just below your arm on your back. Turn it back and turn it through. And turn it back and turn it through. It should touch you on both sides in the same place. So work with this. This gives you the tempo. When you use the sponge under your foot, it gives you the feeling of the coiling and the uncoiling motion. Now, if you do it incorrectly, let's say you start back and you lift, there's no coil. You'll know because it'll hit you in the back. Or let's say on the way through, you have a scooping motion. See, it's just not going to come around correctly. So it tells you if you're doing it correctly by where it touches you on your shoulders and your back when you make your swing. Back and through, and back, and through. Now let's take that to the practice tee when you play. When you go out, take your sponge, and take your tempo ball, and make effective practice sessions. Take a ball, and tee it up. Take your tempo ball and your sponge. Get your position. And take some practice swings and feel the position. Feel the coiling motion. And then through. And it's amazing how much power you'll have as that club returns on that inner arc. Also, take your time on the practice tee with your tempo ball. Because we want to build these feelings of tempo so that on the golf course they become automatic. So take the ball and swing back and through and feel the motion. Close your eyes. Don't get in a rush. Do it about four or five times, just what I'm doing right now. You know it's right. And then take your club and take a couple swings with it. That away. And then step in and there it is. You can do it because you have the equipment that's going to help you to get the feelings that you can then transfer to your golf game when you go out to play. So make your practice very effective.